What's up, y'all? I'm Andy Story with Wild Lumens, and today I'm going to show you the quick and easy way to make carnivore diet beef bread. That's right, we're making bread that's completely carnivore diet approved and use beef to make it. It's a crazy recipe. But before we begin, I want to give a shout out to three websites where I use their recipes in order to learn how to make this one. So this recipe is basically a hybrid of three other recipes. And those websites that I highly recommend you go check out are KetoCon, The Armstrong Sisters, and Carnivore RX. They're great websites with plenty of information and a lot of carnivore diet content. Before we get to this awesome recipe, I'm gonna make one small request. Go ahead and hit that subscribe button, give us a like, and feel free to drop a comment below. We really appreciate it. One other thing, if you're interested in the carnivore diet and wanting to learn how to make more carnivore diet related recipes, then I'm gonna highly recommend you pick up a copy of my friend Jessica Haggard's book, The Carnivore Cookbook. Within this book, there are plenty of carnivore diet approved recipes, which will make the carnivore diet 10 times more interesting. Now, let's dive on into this recipe. I should also mention before we begin to go ahead and preheat your oven to 370. Another thing I want to talk about is that this recipe doesn't contain any pork rinds. I've made the carnivore diet bread with pork rinds in the past, but for some reason I just didn't like the taste as much. Today's recipe is going to be very basic and it's so basic that it's similar to the carnivore diet waffles and pancakes that I've made. And if you're interested in that recipe, check out the videos below. I think you're really going to like it. It switches up your breakfast and makes it way Way more interesting. What we're gonna need today tool wise is pretty simple. Go ahead and pick yourself up a nice bread making bowl and then of course we'll need some mixing bowls for the batter, a whisk and spatula and if you have a trusty Vitamix mixer. I used to make a ton of smoothies with this Vitamix but now it's dedicated to carnivore diet approved recipes. And speaking of the recipe, let's talk about what we're gonna need. We're gonna need some butter, about two ounces. We're definitely gonna need some ground beef. Try to get some grass fed. Today's ground beef that I'm using is actually from the store. It's an 80-20 fat ratio. I'm gonna go ahead and use this because later in the day, I actually have a half cow coming and that's gonna be able to feed the family for the next couple of months. You're gonna need two ounces of cream cheese. Then then you're gonna need five eggs. Well, actually, I should say you're gonna need eight eggs, five eggs that we're gonna be using, and then we're gonna be using the egg whites from three. And finally, some Redmond Real Salt, my favorite go-to brand for salt and electrolyte mixes. The reason I like Redmond is because they source their salt from the middle of Utah, so you're not worried about contaminated salt that may have microplastics or toxins if it comes from the ocean. Plus, the cool thing is that they give our readers at Wild Lumens com and our viewers from YouTube uh, up to a 15% discount. All you got to do is use the link below or go to their website and type in wild as your coupon code when you are checking out. Let's go ahead and talk about the steps we're going to take to make this awesome bread recipe. First, we're going to need to cook up our ground beef. I'm just going to cook this in a pan over the oven. Then we're going to take our five eggs, put them in a mixing bowl, mix those up. In a separate mixing bowl, we're going to take the egg whites, whisk those, and put those on the side. Come back, put the ground beef in with the eggs, put that in the blender, mix it up, put that back in the mixing cup, and then put our, our whisked eggs in there, and we're just gonna mix that together. The reason we're using these whisked, whisked egg whites is because it's gonna help make the bread a little bit fluffier by increasing the air in the batter. Our ground meat is fully cooked. I'm gonna go ahead and add our five eggs to the mix, and then put that in the blender and go ahead and blend it up. All right, guys, all I'm gonna do now is add these egg whites and whisk them up and get those ready. Then I'm gonna hit power on the blender, add a little salt, and then mix it all together. And then save those yolks for later. Go ahead and cook those up and put them to use. Oh, and I almost forgot we do need to add our teaspoon of salt. So I'm gonna go ahead and open up my 10 pound bucket and get my teaspoon of salt and just put that into our blender. Go through a lot of salt, so I always buy it in bulk. This 10 pound bucket will definitely last a while and save me a few bucks. There we go. I like the Vitamix. It's definitely the Cadillac of all blenders. 
So we'll go ahead and put our batter in another mixing bowl and then add in our egg yolks, but kind of do it slowly and then just start whisking because we're really wanting this to have some air trapped in the batter so that it makes it a little fluffier. Totally made a mistake. I forgot to add our cream cheese, which makes the batter a little bit thicker. So let's go ahead and hit rewind. As you guys can tell, I'm definitely not a chef or even close to being a cook. So mistakes are often made. So let's go ahead and put this batter back in the Vitamix. I didn't finish pouring in all of the uh, egg whites, so they're halfway in there. So we'll just go ahead and plop that cream cheese in, get this guy blended. Go ahead and put it back in the mixing bowl. Then let's finish doing the whisks uh, or whisking our whisked eggs. Then all we gotta do is use butter to prevent the bread from sticking to the glass. And now we can go ahead and put our batter in our bread baking bowl and put it in the oven. All right, guys, the bread is totally ready to be eaten. I forgot to mention, I usually put it in the oven for 40 minutes. So that was at 370, 40 minutes. Go ahead and figure out what works best for you. You can always do the toothpick tester to see if it's fully cooked. If you pull the toothpick out and it's got a bunch of stuff on it, you may need to cook it a little longer. And of course, elevation always comes into play when you're baking good. But for now, let's go ahead and see what this tastes like. All I'm gonna do is go ahead and just butter up one slice. It's still a little bit warm. I've had it sitting or cooling off for about, I would say, 15 minutes. So it's warm enough to where it's gonna barely melt the butter. And another thing we'll do right after this is I'm gonna put it in the toaster oven just so you can see when you toast it, it gets it a little bit uh, harder and more, well, obviously closer to toast. Pretty good as always. It's not gonna taste like bread you're getting from the store. I mean, that's real bread and this is carnivore diet bread and this bread is gonna taste a little eggy, but this is the solution. So this is cool to go ahead and make grilled cheese sandwiches. You can even put a little meat on there with a little bit of mayo. I've made carnivore diet mayo in the past. That didn't come out all that good, but it's, you know, it's carnivore. But this is still definitely really good. Maybe another suggestion is to put a little honey if you can tolerate honey and you can have it kind of like a little dessert or a snack. So there's plenty of opportunities to incorporate this into your diet in different areas and uh, just have fun with it. But for now, I'm gonna go put a piece in the toaster oven, come back and just show you what the toasted version uh, looks like. Okay guys, just got this little piece of bread from the toaster. I'm gonna go ahead and try it out and see if it tastes a little bit different. So that's really good. My suggestion would be to make this bread and then when you're ready to use it, go ahead and toast it up, put some butter on it. And I think you got yourself a really, really good snack. Uh, I also went ahead and put a little honey on this one just so that we can get a little bit of a reaction of uh, how this tastes with butter and honey. That's really good too. This bread's easy, it's awesome. You could probably make it once a week and get yourself a pretty good amount of nutrition. My only recommendation is to uh, test out the amount of salt you wanna put on it and also test the uh, amount of time you wanna cook it in the oven. So there you go guys, thanks for watching this video. Thanks for supporting us and I'll see you on the next one.